So was the Marine Corps really right to transition from iron sights to the Advanced Combat Optical Gun Sight, or ACOG? And even more importantly, what do Marines do if it breaks? Last night, I got called out by everyone's favorite Master Sergeant, Pogue Actual, also known as Massarn Stanek, after I left this comment on his video about irons versus optics. Alex Hollings says iron sights are the battlefield equivalent of writing in cursive. Any real value in learning it is greatly exaggerated by cultural inertia. And if you're not following Alex, you need to go do it now. I agree with you 100%, but what say you against all of the people in the comments section of that video that you just commented on to all the people that say, what if the ACOG breaks or your optic breaks? What are you going to do then if you don't know how to use the iron? I once asked this question myself a long time ago, and I was given the uh, old... Uh, probably fairy tale that a study was conducted a while back and they gave the probability of a mass amount of service members optics failing in combat and that probability was very tiny now alex i'm wondering my challenge to you is can you verify that such a study actually happened now i know your expertise uh hovers around the aviation realm and that's cool but I think if anybody's got some connects or some strings to pull or a phone call or even a text message to send to somebody, it would probably be you to be able to figure this out. The Marine Corps made the leap to purchasing the Trigicon Advanced Combat Optical Gun Sight, or ACOG, all the way back in 2005. But it took a few years for them to roll out across the fleet. And that's why, despite getting in in 2006, I qualified on iron sights for my first few years in uniform. Now, I shot expert on the irons and the ACOG, and with the pistol just to brag, and it is very hard to deny the advantage or benefit provided by the four-time magnification of the RCO, Rifle Combat Optic, it's what a lot of us call the ACOG. But that hasn't stopped old timers like me from acting like this change was a bad thing. We call this cultural inertia. It's where we don't like change, even if it's for the better, because we're used to the way things are. And that's part of a much longer Marine Corps tradition of every generation acting as though the generation that comes after them is somehow way softer than we ever were. But to be clear, having concerns about the durability of rifle optics is absolutely founded. And that's really why the RCO, or the ACOG, was such a good choice. Now, the Marine Corps has not released the data from their studies that made them ultimately choose the Trigicon ACOG, but there are a number of other studies, official reports, and other types of data that we can look to to see if this is really a problem. But let's start with the lowest hanging fruit, and that's how these optics have made Marines more lethal in the fight. To bring this story back into my wheelhouse, the ACOG was actually designed by an aerospace engineer named Glenn Binden. Now, he cut his teeth on aircraft like the F-8U Crusader before going on to work for NASA and ultimately the Ford Motor Company. And during his nights and weekends, he set out to design a new rifle scope that would be significantly tougher than those currently on the market, and would allow for what he called the Binden aiming concept. Now, this concept was predicated on the idea of having a bright enough floating reticle in the optic so that you could keep both eyes open while you aim. Your brain would then merge those two images and superimpose the reticle over whatever it was that you were aiming at. This would also allow for much faster target acquisition as well as better situational awareness in combat. Having two eyes open is just better than one. Now, that approach combined with its four times magnification made shooters far more accurate. And while we can't look to the figures the Marine Corps used in their testing, we can look to a 2018 study conducted by the U.S. Army Research Lab where they were trying to assess the efficacy of having soldiers zero their own rifles versus having experts zero their rifles for them. The study ultimately concluded that while there were differences between soldier and expert zeroed rifles, the biggest differences in things like hit percentages came from the types of sights being used. Across the entirety of testing, soldiers using iron sights, both zeroed for them or by them, scored a 69% average hit percentage, while those using ACOGs, again, zeroed both for them and by them, 
scored an average of 89%. And when you average beginner and advanced shooters together, they still saw a 17% reduction in radial error. In other words, shooters with ACOGs had much tighter shot groups. When accounting for only advanced shooters with expert zeroed rifles, the difference became even more pronounced, with a 42% improvement among soldiers using ACOGs. ACOGs even made Marines so much more accurate in combat, the media reported that the Marine Corps investigated a high number of headshots among insurgents because they were concerned that Marines were executing prisoners. According to media reports, it turned out Marines were just better able to hit insurgents when they poked their head out from behind cover. But to be clear, I couldn't find confirmation of this investigation in any channels outside of the media. So take that for what you will. But what about the real question here? How durable are ACOGs? First of all, anybody who doesn't know, I want to make sure you're aware that these ACOGs don't take batteries. They're illuminated through a combination of the decay of radioactive tritium, as well as a fiber optic illuminator. And they're good for about 12 to 15 years before needing to be swapped out, though the Marine Corps' policy is to replace them every 10. But with that, we can finally get to toughness, because I am convinced that anyone who asks about this has never spent any time in the field or deployed carrying one of these RCOs, because they are legendarily tough. They were designed using forged aluminum to be as tough as the weapons they're mounted on, and by all accounts, that's what they are. Back in 1989, the U.S. Army was exploring replacements for the M16 M4 family of service rifles, and three of the entries came with ACOGs on board because their manufacturers knew it would make the weapons far more accurate. Now, one of these weapons in testing actually exploded, taking out about two-thirds of the front lens of the ACOG while it was at it. But to the utter shock of the testers, the ACOG still functioned fine and still held a zero. In 2004, a Marine had his life saved by his ACOG, an ACOG that wasn't issued to him. It was actually purchased for him by his Marine father prior to the deployment. He had been shot by an Iraqi sniper, and the ACOG stopped the round. Hell, in 2020, the website Pew Pew Actual was torture testing rifle optics when they shot their ACOG with everything from 12-gauge birdshot to 22 LR rounds. And when they put it back on their rifle, they found not only had it maintained a zero, but there was no shift in point of impact. But some of the more important metrics for the ACOG's success aren't as easy to measure with hard numbers. Like, rather than the number of people hit, Let's talk about the number of people not hit, because more than one Marine leader has come back from deployment and credited the ACOG's magnification as allowing his or her Marines to be able to assess threats from greater distances, stopping them from shooting civilians that may have appeared to be a threat, and helping them to identify threats at greater range. And for those who still think they might manage to break this forged aluminum RCO off their weapon, you should know that the Marine Corps still issues backup iron sights, though I haven't been in in a while, so I don't know how widespread that is. Ultimately, I'm inclined to agree with the warrior monk himself, James Mattis, when he said the ACOG mounted on the M16 service rifle has proven to be the biggest improvement in lethality for the Marine infantrymen since the introduction of the M1 Garand in World War II. <laughs>